This is a reading from Titus chapter 3, verses 4 to 7. But when the kindness of and love of God, our Saviour, appeared, he saved us, not because of, the, of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and the renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out upon on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Saviour, so that having been justified by his grace, we may become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Iona. That was so well read. Well, good morning. Welcome. Sorry, we have a bit of a height difference between me and Sarah. It involves a lot of up and down. Uh, I need to remember to put it back, which I didn't at St. Faith's, and that was awkward. Um, Good morning. I'm Chris. I'm the new curate here. If you haven't met me or if you're new or visiting, you're so welcome. And on this day, as we are baptising Isabel, it is so nice to have you, uh, her friends and family with us. And I'm just going to talk briefly a bit about what baptism is and looking at this passage from Titus, which is one that you may not be that familiar with. It's not a passage we look at a lot. But I think it, for me, encapsulates a lot about what we're doing here today. Because the the, the sort of overall thing we're doing here today is we're we're marking a moment on a journey. Because what we are all on together is a journey together with God. And so my question to you this morning is, what sort of traveller are you? Are you a spontaneous, this is, oh, we can go here today, let's go, traveller. Are you a meticulous planner that sets out every step you're going to go on in advance? You know exactly where and when you need to be places. Are you the type of person who turns up at the airport just before you know you need to get to the flight, or like me, four hours in advance, because you can never spend too long uh, you know, browsing duty-free, can you? <clears throat> uh, are you someone who enjoys the journey, or is it more about the destination? We all travel differently, we all travel through life differently, and we all travel with God differently. And some of us travel much more easily than others, and some parts of our journey are easier than others. We can all think of journeys that we have been on uh, in our lives which have been easy or been difficult. We can think of those journeys where everything seems to have gone right. I remember getting ready to go on my honeymoon, and everything on that journey went right. We got to the airport well. The plane was amazing. The food was great. Great plain food, which is always amazing. But I can think of other difficult journeys that we, I've been on. Journeys where you've hit delays and problems, where everything seems against you, which are full of anxiety and worry. Our journeys with God can always feel different in different places. But we are comforted by knowing that we are not the first people to go on a journey with God. The whole people of God from the very beginning have been on this journey. We see this best in the story of Moses, who travels with the people of God from Egypt through the desert to the Promised Land. We see it um, as the people of God move into and out of through exile and um, coming back into that Promised Land. And we see it in the life of Jesus, who is always on the move, always talking about where he is going to, always going to what is pointing to what is to come. And so this sense of movement, of journey, means it's not a surprise that the earliest name for Christians was the people of the way, the people who follow the way of Jesus. And so we too are all invited into this journey with Jesus, this journey that takes us where he was going and is going, to join our lives to his journey and into his direction. And that's the amazing thing, that we are all invited on this journey. You don't need special tickets. You don't need to have been good enough. You don't need to have been the best. You're invited not because you are special, but because God loves us and wants us to journey with him. So in that love, God sent Jesus to make it possible to journey with him. As our passage says, not because of righteous things, right things that we have done, but because of his mercy. That's the scary thing about journeying with Jesus, that we don't know what the journey will look like. If you're a planner like me, that is frightening. 
You don't know what might come next. We don't know where it might take us. But we do know where it is going. But we'll get on to that later. And we do know that what we will have what we need for the journey. Our passage says, He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously. Jesus is the best travelling companion. He not only invites us to journey with him, but he provides us with everything that we need. Today we're baptising Isabel, and in so doing we are marking her equipping for her journey with God. We are recognising that she is setting out on this journey and that she already has everything that she needs. We see this happening a lot in Scripture, this moment of marking of transition. Moses leads the people of Israel through the Red Sea, through the water, out of slavery and into freedom. Joshua would then lead them through the River Jordan into the land that they had been promised. And fast forwarding, we see Jesus being baptised and God appearing and saying, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. That's what we're doing in baptising. We are recognising and affirming that a person is loved, known and recognised by God. It is why we as their friends and family and church family are gathered here today to give thanks and to celebrate and to affirm how wonderful and loved Isabel is. That other thing that happens at Jesus' baptism is the appearance of the Holy Spirit coming to Jesus, often in the form, said in the form of a dove. And we believe that God is at work in each one of us, renewing us, sending his Holy Spirit upon us, not to make us into someone different, but to renew us into the fullest and most alive versions of ourselves. As Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. That is the promised life that baptism brings, not a promise of an easy life, not a smooth journey, but a full life, a journey full of adventure and surprises, life as the best it can be. But how God equips us for the journey does not end in what he does in each one of us. Because it is God that is in work in all of us. God is not just doing things in you alone. God is with us. We are a communal faith, a group that travels on this journey together. We are not going on our journey with Jesus by ourselves, but with all those who are around us with all those that God puts in our lives and who travel with us. We are not leaving Isabel to journey alone, but we are marking this as a moment where we come along and support her. We are together God's people on a journey with him, and we're called to be good travelling companions, to support one another, to help each other, to point us on the right, each other on the right way where it is needed. As part of the baptism liturgy, Sarah will say, St. Paul's, will you promise to support her as she begins her journey of faith and help her to grow in faith as a member of God's family? And we get to respond, with the help of God, we will. Shall we practice those words? It's good to have a practice. So will you say with me on three, with the help of God, we will. One, two, three. With the help of God, we will. And I hope you will, we make this response and we make it joyfully and enthusiastically for Isabel, but we make it joyfully and enthusiastically for all of us. Because if you're here and if you've been baptised, if you're part of the family, uh, if you're walking with Jesus in some way or form, then that promise is for you as well. With the help of God, we will walk with you, all of us. We will point you in the way that you Uh, in the right direction when it's getting difficult. We will walk alongside you when it's hard. We will be there when you need us. We will be there to support you and love you. We will be there to celebrate with you when it goes well. That's what that promise is. Because as we celebrate this baptism of Isabel, we are celebrating and remembering the promises we make over all of us. But that we are also taking on a journey with a destination. 
this might be for the most important part for those of you who are destination people. This is what the scripture says today. So that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. Heirs can seem like a strange word because heirs is not a place. You don't go to, well, to heirs, not in this sense. But it's a status, a status that talks in of being a beloved child, about receiving an inheritance. And that is what the journey of God is going to, to being a beloved children, living life with God, full life with God, whole and complete life with God forever. But it's not just a status of belovedness, but one of sharing in responsibility and authority. As God's children, as those who are journeying with Jesus, as people of the way, God is clear that we are not just to be content with knowing that we are loved and valued and treasured, but also to share the knowledge of that loveness with others, to share it with each and every person that we come into contact with, to live lives that demonstrate the fullness of life we have through the way that we love and care for those around us. That is our prayer for Isabel today, that as she is equipped by God through the Holy Spirit and those that God has put around her to uphold her, that she will grow into the person with such character that she will transform the world through how she loves it. That whatever she finds herself doing, wherever she finds herself doing it, that she will be a person who carries and demonstrates the love of God. And that's not just our promise and prayer for Isabel, but it is our promise and prayer for each of us today and every day. It's the role that you have been commissioned into in your baptism, that you will be people who are so full of love that that love pours out through you into every place and every aspect of your life. And so as we participate in the baptism today, You might want to be responding along in your hearts with the promises that we are making, making them again, renewing and refreshing them and reminding yourselves of those promises made over you in your own baptism, reminding yourself of how loved by God you are, how valuable you are to him, how he desires to be journeying with you, how he is equipping you for your journey each and every day and how we are called to support and uphold one another. And maybe you haven't felt like you've made those promises before. Maybe this isn't a mo- this, it, what I've been speaking about today is fresh or new or intriguing and you want to know more. And we'd love to talk to you more about that. And we're going to be running an alpha course um, at the end of September. And it'd be a great opportunity to find out more about this Jesus Um, that we are all journeying with. So let us pray. Father God, we thank you that you love us so much, that you love us despite anything that we might have done, that you sent Jesus in your mercy to come and give us fullness of life. We pray that fullness of life for each of us today, and especially over Isabel as she comes to baptism. Lord, send your Holy Spirit upon us now, that we may be made fully alive for you this day and evermore. Amen. Let's stand as we sing our next hymn.